Hello. As a person who has many sinus problems and who has been advised by my ENT doctor to use saline, irrigation, or rinses, I frequently review the web for any interesting advice on how to manage this better. I usually find only the same questions being asked over and over, and the answers are typically just providing the same very limited information. I decided to share information on the process and equipment that I have found useful in my own situation. Nasal irrigation is simply a rinse of water through one nostril and out the other, flooding the nasal passages and the sinuses at the same time. This will help flush out pollens and other irritants, and it also helps remove congested mucus that tends to accumulate in the sinuses. The body is not too happy about just running cold water through those areas, and it can be quite uncomfortable and even painful. Doctors recommend using lukewarm or body temperature water, and they also recommend mixing salt with the water, which makes it more pleasant and also more effective. Many specialists also advise that instead of a steady stream of water, a pulsating water stream will work better. There are a number of devices to provide a pulsate action. In the following video, I will present what works well for me. The information has been obtained from my doctors, so I am not making anything up here. I don't think I will be showing any procedure or equipment that would be harmful. Still, you should consult with your own doctor before using any nasal irrigation. Another thing about nasal irrigation is that it is one of the more embarrassing things that somebody can do, and it's best done in private. This picture is pulled from a website of embarrassing things that somebody can do, and no matter which photo you see of somebody doing nasal irrigation, they always have a great big smile, which I think is highly unrealistic. First, the subject of the salt. The most readily available salt in most homes is regular table salt, but this salt is iodized, meaning that it is salt combined with iodine. The iodine is there to make sure that people get enough of it in their diet, but it is not good for nasal irrigation since it will cause a strong stinging sensation and is probably bad for other reasons as well. Iodized salt will say iodized on it, but you can also use readily available non-iodized salt which is sold in any grocery store. However, there are readily available pre-mixed saline formulas that include both regular salt and baking soda, usually mentioned on the label using their chemical names of sodium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. The most commonly available brand in America of this pre-mixed salt is Neomed, and it is sold in boxes of 100 packets that resemble little sugar or salt packets found in restaurants. Each packet contains enough salt to be mixed with water contained in the most commonly available irrigation devices. I prefer the newer Neomed packets that have a tubular shape such as shown here since they are a bit easier to pour into the sometimes narrow openings of water containers and because the salt is not packed down in the packet as much as it does in the flat packets. Neomed salt labeled as sinus rinse is sold in most drugstores in North America. You can pack any of these small packets into your luggage when you travel. Next, the irrigation devices. The most basic device is your cupped hands, and you can hold water in your cupped hands and simply snort the water into your nose and then blow it out again. But this method does not work well when you want to have the salt dissolved in the water. The next device is the infamous neti pot. This is simply a long-necked pot where you mix the water and salt in the body of the pot, then insert the end of the long neck into one nostril and raise the pot to start the flow. The neti pot is great, but it can be hard to clean. It is usually rather fragile, being made of ceramics. It is not too easy to pack in luggage for traveling, and it does not have any means to provide pulsate action if you want it. Getting slightly fancier is the plastic squeeze bottle equipped with a suitable nozzle for insertion into the nostril. These are excellent for packing into luggage since they are unbreakable and lightweight. You can also modulate the water flow by rapidly altering the force you use to squeeze the bottle achieving a sort of pulsate action by this method. A popular brand of these bottles is Neomed, but they are not the only ones on the market and there are many others available. Going high-tech, there are variations on motorized sinus rinse pumps. These all have a water container where you mix the water and salt, then press a button to activate the pump, and the water is sent under low pressure into your nostril via the nozzle. Some brands, such as the commonly available Neomed Sinugator pump, operate in such a way as to provide the pulsate action all the time when operating. These pumps are handheld, not too heavy, and they can be packed into luggage easily. 
Finally, there are more elaborate motorized pumps, and these are probably best used by people who need to use nasal irrigation frequently. These also provide the pulsate action, but usually you can adjust the pressure and intensity of the pulsate action. These also usually include various nozzles to allow other uses of the pump, such as rinsing the back of the throat to alleviate post-nasal drip discomfort, or for cleaning out debris or wax from the ears. I use one made by Sinupulse, which is reportedly a spin-off of the Water Pick Company. At least the product is very similar to the Water Pick Dental product, except for water pressure and nozzle type. I personally find this product a bit of a pain to keep clean if not used frequently, and it is too large to be easily packed for travel. Now on to the water. In many ways, this is the biggest single issue with nasal irrigation, since for best results and safety you want the correct water temperature as well as a high level of water purity. You don't want to use well water because of the risk of infection from the Negleria falere bacteria, although reportedly this is more of a problem in regions that have primarily shallow wells. Besides this lethal bug, there are other bacteria and protozoa and amoebas that can cause dangerous infections. If you can only get well water, you need to boil it for several minutes and then allow it to cool to near body temperature before use. If you use treated municipal tap water, there is less danger from these bugs, but remember that the city water treatment is set up to make water safe for normal ingestion, where stomach acid will kill most remaining bugs. There can still be bugs in treated water. If you use normal bottled water from the store, it is usually only high quality tap water, often with some filtering and perhaps some added minerals. It is safer to use than tap water, but still not perfect. The best water to use, and what is recommended by every authority I have ever seen or heard from, is distilled water. This is readily available at most grocery stores, usually in gallon jugs, but it can be a bit of a nuisance to always have it on hand when you want to use it. And then there is the problem of how to get the water warm enough without getting too hot. Many sources advise to microwave a small amount of distilled water in a cup before adding the salt. I find this very inconvenient and also difficult to get the right temperature every time. It is because of the aforementioned problems with having the right water readily at hand when needed that I decided to make my own little water factory. I purchased a home type water distiller made by Megahome that is relatively inexpensive and it produces one gallon of distilled water from my well tap water every five hours. I keep one or two gallon jugs of distilled water on hand using empty jugs that originally came from the store with commercially purchased distilled water. I never use these jugs for anything else so they remain clean. I would not recommend reusing gallon jugs that had milk or juice in them. To keep the distilled water ready for use at body temperature I use an electrically heated pot that is intended for keeping water warm for use in a baby's bottle. The one I have is by Baby Brezza, and I have found it to be ideal for the purpose, although it is in no way marketed for nasal irrigation. I fill it with the distilled water, and it automatically heats it to 98 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the median range of the human body temperature. It only takes a few minutes to warm cold water, and then it holds the water at that temperature for hours or even days. There is a digital readout that shows the current water temperature, and a colored light appears to change the water color so it is blue when at the correct temperature and red when it is too cold. This pot is of good quality and I have had no complaints with this performance. It is not very easy to clean inside and really should be dedicated to use for your nasal irrigation. Don't use it to war warm anything else. And I always stick a finger in the water after I have poured it into my nasal irrigator just to double check that it is not too hot or cold before injecting it into my nose. If the temperature feels neutral, neither cold nor warm, then it is correct. After using the water distiller for a while, I realized that it does not bake the well water's minerals onto the internal stainless steel tank if I turn the distiller off shortly before it boils off the last of the water. I simply timed a couple of batches and found a consistent time that left about an inch of water in the bottom. Then I made sure to manually unplug it before it could automatically shut itself off, which normally happens when the boiler temperature rises when the last of the water has been boiled away. Later on, I rigged up a little electrical box with a solid state timer. 
which I programmed for the desired distillation time, and I don't have to be around when the distiller is working. I can start a batch before I go to bed, and the timer shuts off the distiller's power automatically shortly before it would have shut down on its own. However, it is still necessary to run a batch with citric acid in the tank every now and then to clean the stainless steel tank itself. None of that mineral or well sludge material can get into the finished distilled water, but you don't really want to see it every time you open the tank to refill it with your tap water. And here is the baby Brezza with its blue coloration.